procedure, even if he doesn't necessarily always understand the implications of it. So just finally, if I could list the practical steps that I think the EU needs to undertake in order to, to improve its Ukraine policy. First of all, uh, it needs to uh, accelerate progress on the negotiation of the deep free trade area, uh, not always leaving it up to Ukraine to, to do the heavy lifting on that, but also providing the administrative support that is lacking within the country sometimes to undertake the reforms that are, are, are necessary. And I'm very pleased to see that the Lithuanian government is trying to do something to help uh, the government <coughs> in Kiev with the kind of administrative backup based on its own experience in the accession process. I think that's very necessary. I think we often underestimate how difficult it is for a lot of these countries to make these changes. <coughs> Second, visa liberalization ultimately leading to visa-free travel I think is necessary to uh, accelerate and deepen uh, into uh, personal exchanges between, between the two countries. <coughs> energy cooperation, not simply uh, upgrading Ukraine's energy supply infrastructure, which is very needed, but also allowing Ukraine to tap its very considerable uh, potential resources of energy, particularly by exploiting this new unconventional gas uh, opportunity uh, that has arisen because of technological changes in, in North America. The rise of conventional gas production is really a, a very significant factor in, in European energy supply and, and politics at the moment. Uh, I'm told by people who know this field very well that Ukraine has very considerable reserves of unconventional gas, moving towards a greater energy independence for Ukraine, or possibly even in the long term, as I understand it being possible, for Ukraine to become an energy exporter would be a very big plus for that country and for European politics generally. And finally, I think uh, the EU needs to have a structured dialogue with Ukraine on democracy and human rights issues in which myth and fact can be properly separated and the country's assessed performance on democratic standards can be properly and objectively assessed and very specific criticisms and, and, uh, uh, and forms of engagement can be tailored around that is very essential. I know that uh, the EU has recently developed structured dialogues on those issues with uh, the countries in the Caucasus. It's, it seems to me an obvious gap in EU-Ukraine relations which could be uh, very profitably filled uh, from the point of view of the EU and Ukraine. And finally, I would say that uh, uh, the EU should remain open and open-minded in its dealings with Ukraine, uh, and that means uh, being willing to uh, look at the facts, to judge the country uh, against its actual performance, and not to get trapped into the habit of uh, making assumptions about the country based on the prejudices either of uh, European policymakers or the, the claims being made by the opposition in Ukraine. Thank you very much indeed, Dave.